Today's webinar, I'm thrilled that we'll be joined by Johan Schmieder, who's VP of Enterprise Architecture at Schaffler. Johan, over to you. Thanks for the introduction. This is Johan Schmieder speaking. Um, it's my pleasure to give you the next 40 minutes uh, um, short introduction about how we are designing future enterprise architecture at Schaeffler, also with the usage of the business design solution. And I'm happy to answer questions after the short uh, presentation in a more interactive mode. Um, as stated in the uh, invitation, I will just uh, give you a short introduction about the Scheffler Challenge and then a brief overview about the enterprise architecture framework, which we are using at Scheffler the focus and challenges uh, within enterprise architecture, uh, as well as the integrated AI repository with bit design, followed by a bit of an outlook, next level enterprise architecture challenge um, with uh, people, process, culture change in AA, which is required to do it. And also some uh, examples, how we're using all the introduced and told uh, aspects in uh, BIS design, uh, how we supporting the outlined topics. As Scheffler, as, as well as the um, uh, industry as such, we are challenging, um, or we have challenging times ahead of us. Um, just a, a brief um, uh, deep dives on the topics. Um, we have for consolidating a newly emerging customer base, especially in the automotive sector um, at Scheffler. We have a strong automotive uh, supplier uh, industry or business. Uh, we have an uh, industrial uh, equipment business as well as an automotive aftermarket business. So we're not entirely uh, focused on automotive supplier, but I guess 50% of our business is. And that's why we see in the automotive uh, transformation a lot of challenges, uh, emerging customer base, but also competitor, uh, autonomous drive, electric drive. Um, coming from a, a legacy uh, from physical products, everything which is rolling or sliding. Um, uh, we have a, a significant um, footprint in the um, combustion engine cars, now transforming to a hybrid or even electric um, uh, car is, is quite a challenging one in technology, but also in uh, products and, and parts. We have huge customer demands, expectations in, in terms of new innovative products uh, coming from a legacy, more physical products oriented, now coming more into the space of uh, complex mechatronical uh, components, electric, electronic, software, embedded, um, intelligent products as part of our uh, of a, of a um, bigger product. Um, the digitalization technology differentiation um, I guess affects us all, uh, not only in the company and the enterprise as well, but also when it comes to our product, product design, product manufacturing, uh, products as such. And for sure, um, we are right in the middle of an ecosystem um, with our partners, suppliers, but also with our customers, OEMs. Um, we are highly in the changes in the ecosystem, which um, sums up that we have multidimensional challenges, uh, which we are in where enterprise architecture becomes more and more a key topic, how to manage uh, the complexity and um, derive the right decisions on a fact-based manner. At Scheffler, um, this is our, our new coming from out of our new strategy, we pioneer motion, uh, because I just uh, uh, briefly said our legacy is everything which is uh, rolling and sliding. Uh, we pioneer motion together, together at Scheffler, but also together with our suppliers, partners, and ecosystem. And um, as, a, as a short sentence, with all the changes um, in the ecosystem market digitization, I guess it's, it's worth to say it's, it's not the strongest company that will succeed. It's the one who adapts uh, to change more quickly, intelligent and digital. And um, for me, this is a perfect um, sentence to capture everything at once. We have to be, uh, we have to be able to adopt to changes quickly, um, leverage digital capabilities in uh, any dimension. And that's why enterprise architecture at Scheffler is, is supporting a modern, innovative, flexible IT architecture, which is driving business innovation, agility, and efficiency. And that's how we're positioning enterprise architecture at Scheffler to be uh, one of the enabler to manage the complexity and uh, guide the right uh, changes in the right manner. 
of, on top of it. Um, how to do it? At Scheffler, we have introduced a IT at Scheffler framework, and within enterprise architecture is, is a core topic. It's more focused, or the origin is more IT focused, but um, I'm coming uh, in a few minutes to the enterprise architecture views and, and disciplines within. Um, we established a overarching uh, framework where we, where we structure the enterprise in our functions, which is more the, the classical pro, uh, internal functions, but also in terms of uh, divisions, uh, which is having the PL. And we have different IT patterns underneath, whether we are talking about our classical process IT, whether we are um, talking about service IT around our products, about equipment IT, which is everything in the manufacturing space, shop floor, R&D, or when it comes to our products where we have embedded uh, technology inside anything connected over an IT network, but also then um, consumable for our users, and that's why user IT. So we clustered what kind of enterprise architecture, enterprise IT architecture patterns are we talking about uh, in order to differentiate this kind of patterns and not mixing them up. Um, within better architecture, the architecture is really dealing uh, about future development plans and, and patterns and guidance, uh, how we are changing the various patterns and the dimensions uh, within our companies, but also in combination left to the ecosystem, which we are working closely together as well as with our customers, um, because in a global supply chain, in a global ecosystem, we are working very, very closely together from the first ideas over design, development, manufacturing, um, provisioning, but also in a service market. That's why we have to have an end-to-end -end view about all the dependencies within our ecosystem, but also within Scheffler as such. Um, so this gives us a good um, overview about the context of Scheffler. When we talk about enterprise architecture at Scheffler, we differentiated um, different types, um, which we have to combine enterprise IT architecture as one, but also business architecture, process architecture, and logical and physical data architecture. This is for us very essential to combine these architecture disciplines from a business data and IT perspective, um, because only when we balance the dependencies uh, among each other, we can derive the right decisions and the right integrated architecture uh, fitting to the future demands and requirements. And that's why um, I'm personally accountable for IT architecture, but responsible for enterprise architecture, so that, that we are working with our colleagues in the business architecture as well as the data architecture domains together, so that we have one holistic view where we combine the different views and, and, and uh, artifacts um, and information um, to have really an end-to-end -end view about the dependencies on core capabilities. And this is very important so that we have, we, we are managing enterprise architecture from, from two sides, one more from the strategic toward a conceptual level, but also then when it comes to IT solution architecture, bottom up, how we are building this kind of um, enterprise architecture into really applications, IT systems, and managing them afterwards. That's why we are addressing enterprise architecture from both sides, very granular uh, bottom up and very strategic uh, top down, um, while ensuring that the vertical transparency and link is always given. And this is for us a key um, aspect that we are combining um, information on different levels for different stakeholders for different purposes. But they are in a vertical uh, manner completely integrated and the more deep you go, the more detailed uh, there will be. And so we can manage enterprise architecture on different levels with different details for different stakeholders and for, this, uh, for different decision uh, levels. In order to do it, we have um, established an enterprise architecture framework, um, which is uh, built up of uh, six um, topics. First of all, um, our main deliverable is target architectures who guides us to the future on a certain strategic conceptual level where we address processes or business architecture data as well as IT and the optimum out of it. 
So for us, it's very, very important to drive a value-driven architecture um, to address everything we change in a business manner, in a value manner. For that, we, we ensure that we guide also the investment decisions to the, to the right spots, which makes the highest impact in the, in the company as well as to um, support our decisions, decision maker and stakeholders to give them more transparency about dependencies of the decision, of the project, of the initiatives they wanna, they wanna um, launch and also provide the proper basis for it that they can really be su successful with it. So target architectures is, is the main deliverable. For that we're using for sure guidelines, decision, principles and decisions and target architecture are guided by these uh, guidelines and principles, but also um, decisions on the target architectures and the interim state when needed will be derived and documented and communicated. These are standards best practices um, from the ecosystem, from literature, from the methods point of view. Um, we are working in the ecosystem um, together with other enterprise architects and other foundations um, to not only look uh, into Scheffler in, and stay in, within Scheffler, but also open our minds to um, with system integrators or also um, peer groups in the market where we um, develop enterprise architecture, uh, process method, tools, mindset even further, and also exchange uh, with this kind of peer groups. Um, that within Scheffler, um, when able to derive or to, to sketch target architectures, we have also to think about our talents and our stakeholders and a huge topic uh, for us when thinking enterprise architecture in this various dimensions and, and, uh, and strategy oriented manner, we have to enable, enable our talents and our stakeholders in order to work with us in this complexity but also consume and, and contribute into the enterprise architecture uh, space. And this is uh, a basic, a basic um, enable them with the architectural thinking methods, tools, and way of agile working, but also um, yeah, facilitate them in, in different communities, whether this is more strategy oriented or more solution oriented, uh, global or more local. Uh, we have to uh, manage them and, and collaborate them within communities to unleash the potential of the enterprise architecture in a more collaborative mode. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of having an enterprise architecture team or even a department as an expert group. Yes, we need that as well, but enterprise architecture for me is more a collaborative approach, and that's why uh, we are focusing um, with reasonable focus on enablement and uh, community work to bring this and uh, these architectural thinking um, to our stakeholders uh, on a global level. We go a bit further. I just mentioned briefly, um, we are working on different levels. Um, this pyramid should illustrate uh, different levels of architecture, which have been now uh, well established at Scheffler from a, from a frame perspective. And people really, um, it's funny that they're talking about levels immediately when they are when they um, recognize what kind of levels is for what for and how does level really looking like we have uh, at very top uh, level one ea strategy um, which is uh, really more strategic focus um, and explains on a high level the top management at Scheffler up to the board uh, what enterprise architecture strategy is, the, the core building blocks and, and directions we want to hit uh, with the enterprise architecture and the value add. And um, this is then really broken down in more in domain target architecture. Domain is for us this functions or divisions, which I briefly mentioned. So we have an architecture for HR, for finance controlling, for uh, logistics, for purchasing but also for our business divisions, where specific domain stakeholders get their view about what the enterprise target architecture will look like in their space, addressing their needs and their future challenges. And this gives us a more specific view on, on the target uh, stakeholders and uh, gives us a good collaboration, speed and momentum to work with them collaboratively on the future in terms of business, IT and data. Uh, and which builds also the frame for our future changes. Um, the level three EA models, um, 
this is a kind of detail. We're detailing the domain target architectures once more into more in, into an AA model. Um, you, you, you have to leave the, the Microsoft Office um, a tool set at least at the level three in order to model our enterprise architectures in uh, the various spaces in terms of business architecture, data, and IT architecture, combine them, combine different models, uh, whether it's in the UML and BPMN and Archimate or others. Um, we want to combine the different uh, uh, yeah, influencing factors into one model and then really play around with it, shape together with our stakeholders the future, um, playing some scenarios, um, how we can shape the future, what kind of dependency we have to um, recognize and, and consider in our roadmaps. So this is more really a future modeling, still on a conceptual phase. Uh, where we detail the domain architectures and, and at some points a domain could also be cross functional cross division um, but nevertheless in an enterprise architecture repository they are together so they can slice and dice the the respective use and uh, um, and, and change um, initiatives and the level four when we have um, built our decisions on the level three in terms of initiatives and value add and what what do we want to change in which uh, in which sequence in which manner um, we're handing over to our classical uh, delivery uh, phase uh, where our solution architecture colleagues coming in and and take what we have on level three on the uh, pre-definitions and detailing them once more uh, in, in, to a, uh, a level which they require for really solution architecture. With this approach, we have a, a very consistent uh, vertical integration of architectural levels, but we are always jumping from the higher level toward the detail level. Gives us a very stringent, uh, con, uh, um, um, stringent um, transistor, um, transparent model where we can govern respectively. So my team from Enterprise Architecture are responsible and really driving level one to three. We are making governance and guidelines for the level level four. At some points, we also define the level fours, but our main objective is to enable our global talent pool to make um, a solution architecture by themselves, and we are governing um, the respective uh, execution on it. In a sum, that's our uh, approach, how to um, yeah, integrate enterprise architectures from top down, uh, from top to down, but also from bottom up uh, in a consistent manner, governed by our, um, our um, collaborative approach. Where we have communities working on the different levels, but also allowing uh, uh, collaboration uh, within or across these models. Very important uh, in order to do this kind of approach is to have an integrated uh, enterprise architecture repository and model. And this is the main challenge, um, a classical data integration challenge, but also um, it will not get uh, less complex in the future because enterprise architecture from my on our point of view is, is a, such a data-driven uh, discipline where we want to use uh, an integrated data model for um, yeah, shaping, developing, scenario building the future with our stakeholders together. And that's why uh, we not only have um, our um, classical process data model and, and architecture model uh, combined in an integrated enterprise architecture, we also um, enhance this model with real data from the system wherever we have them. May it be a service now or a Technopedia. Um, Solution Manager, Spider for licensing um, information. Wherever we have information which might be relevant for the enterprise architecture, uh, we want to integrate them and enhance our model because then we have facts and figures available to derive fact-based decisions. The more we need or the more we, we know, the more we integrate the data into an overall view where we can shape the, the, uh, the view to the stakeholders, the better we get. That's why we have um, basically two uh, roles. One is really the gatekeeper of the enterprise architecture model, where we use BizDesign as a as a consolidation source with all the different um, data models underneath, which we can integrate. Um, 
but also we are using this kind of model for our change portfolios. And this is very important. So the one thing is that what we know, but also from a top-down perspective, we are working with our stakeholders about to shape the future. And we can map these kind of changes always to the as is, but also to the um, already defined target architectures. where we can always optimize, shape, iterate, align again and again. So that we have always the, two, uh, the views about what, what is the current state and what why are we changing for what kind of reasons and how they, they're imp impacting each other. And this gives us a very proper um, basis for the certain levels, but also the, the certain um, disciplines where enterprise architecture plays more and more a vital role uh, as an enabler for change. Enterprise architecture, it's, it's a little, little man in the middle with a, with a, with a drawing board. Um, this is very important for us um, that enterprise architecture is, is one key role when it comes to, to changes. And um, this is a nice um, a sketch from a colleague of mine where we, we work as an enterprise architect with our um, stakeholders uh, to shape the future. Um, at best, also uh, generate ideas which uh, uh, um, end up in the funnel of ideas um, and then also business portfolio, IT portfolios. So the better we pre-shape this kind of ideas, change initiatives, um, the better we ensure the proper execution and the, and, uh, the respective basis we need for the execution so that the readiness of execution of the change in initiatives are already given. And uh, we see it the more we are involved in this kind of pre-definitions, shaping of our future demands, initiatives, projects, the better we can run through the strategy to execution cycle. And that's why we also um, more and more come from a, a enterprise architecture push. So where we are um, involved in a process, in a, in, a, in a target strategy definition um, as, a, as a push, we are asked to join this kind of initiatives because people understand now the value of enterprise architecture, that we're having all these dimensions in our minds, but also in, in supported by our tool set in the integrated portfolio, by integrated uh, repository, so that we can shape the future definition with different dimensions uh, relevant to come up with a proper and aligned and optimized um, approach, um, which is pleasing, or which is also a good feedback of the approach coming from more enterprise push to an enterprise pull modus. But very important of, of uh, this cycle is that we are really considering, we're, we're always talking about people. Uh, shaping the future is always aligning and, and, and discussing, shaping, um, consulting with people. Uh, we need to, a kind of a, a process, but also a cultural change in enterprise architecture. So this architecture thinking um, had to become a part of our organization DNA because change is the new normal. And uh, like the, in the beginning, um, the companies who, who are adopted to, um, to those flexible changes at any time, um, the, the better we are in adapting changes, fast, flexible, modular, the better we'll, we'll, we will succeed in the future. That's why this architectural thinking is very important that we are not only um, looking to function features and technology, we have seen somewhere and it's solving a lot of problem. No, we have to think about process, data, IT, organization, people, skills, dependencies to come up with the right, uh, with the right shaping. With the rapid technology and, and, and changes um, um, required, we have also to kill some paradigms, paradigmas, which we are always, over, <laughs> which we are all facing in the, in the companies. Like a hammer and nail paradigm. I mean, if you have uh, worked with a technology the last five five years, you will argue whatever is possible with that technology, rather than thinking beyond what you learned. So you have to adopt your way of thinking using technology, more frequent changes, etc. But not only stick to your thing which you are managing and you have uh, experience in. Um, we have also to think about um, is. Uh, business value proven enterprise architecture. So what is the value when we change that? What is the value in, in introducing a new technology? How can we introduce ABC in a smart way to impact 
one to three KPI. So it's a totally different thinking about value or even KPI driven um, value of enterprise architecture changes. Um, a lot of people are, are asking for transparency and transparency, I need transparency. But if you have uh, achieved a transparency, what then? What do you do with the transparency? So we have to close the link in order to not over overwhelm people with transparency and insights, but also always close the gap. What, what should we do with it? What what uh, what trigger is is meaning, or should we we uh, execute uh, with the insight? So enterprise architecture is really closing the gap between strategy and execution. And with the insight, we have to execute some meaningful activities, some meaningful change, and we have to bring the, 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 the topics and the dots together for what for, what is the impact, why. This is very important when it comes to decision making. Um, enterprise architecture is part of the business and IT change. And that's why um, also the, the picture illustrates that quite nice. Uh, and we have to really discuss about the business value, business outcome, business prioritization um, to have a, a right set. Talent empowerment, upskilling program of architecture thinking um, is very important. But also we need to establish with the talent uh, empowerment and skill set also um, key enterprise architecture roles, um, especially in the, in the business and uh, data space. So business architects, business strategists becoming business architects, but also uh, data uh, architects from a conceptual up to the lower level we need to establish and, and collaborate with them toward a unique uh, enterprise architecture. And for sure, um, which is helpful, um, we have established it at Scheffler Enterprise Architecture is not a role within the IT organization. Um, our reporting line is directly to the CEO, uh, which helps us also to position and, and uh, fill the enterprise architecture with a different momentum having this holistic view about process data and IT, and not only um, and, and not be restricted to IT only. And this is quite nice, gives us more flexibility, more freedom, but also empowers us also to uh, rethink enterprise architecture out of the IT box. One outline, um, as one of our ecosystems, we are working in the cross-business architecture lab uh, with uh, my enterprise architecture peers from major companies in Germany and Austria to, uh, and Switzerland together. And uh, one result where we had a, a work stream called Next Level Development Plan. Um, this was also the result. We have to um, increase the maturity of enterprise architecture uh, development plans or enterprise architecture always in a balance between more really the, the, the development plans um, and tools and, and uh, function and features. On the right hand side, uh, so better enterprise architecture plans, how to build up the future, but we have really to consider our operating model in people, process, org, and culture in order to foster this integrative, uh, different level thinking, architecture thinking in overall. Um, the more dark ones, the more complicated and the more in the future. The light ones are the ones uh, which could be directly attacked. And this is somehow also reflecting our journey at, at Scheffler, that we are improving the enterprise architecture from an operating model, but also from, from the uh, tooling and more um, development plans as such, with some attributes, but also with some, with some activities we have to foster and we have to um, get better in the future. A few um, insights from the time being, um, how we're using this design in it. Uh, first of all, uh, we have um, detailed our uh, framework with uh, different uh, patterns uh, on functions, services, uh, equipment, or product um, the area. We use the same structure, and we are allowing um, our stakeholders and basically everybody at Scheffler. This is a, a Scheffler internal available a view which we are not restricting to um, to users um, to use this kind of information about their domain, about processes or equipment or whatever kind of, of uh, detail you want to have in the dimensions data processes and for sure with a focus also IT so that everybody could use what we have in the repositories inside. They can navigate through it, just a few screens 
on the left uh, upper side is our framework and you can really detail then um, to a portfolio view um, what kind of systems are uh, supporting which kind of business processes but also then in the in the um, lower right corner about architecture overviews which uh, systems are really connected to each other and how some deployment views on the left side classical IT portfolio management topics which is the basis also to give people feedback about what is supporting uh, which technology systems is supporting which capability uh, which processes and and so on and so these views are, are dynamic so you can change the angle and and views depending on the interests within we have all, already um the, the, the basic um, paradigm is that we want to get engaged with the people who are consuming this kind of use. So in any stage in the enterprise architecture, uh, we have possibilities to get interacted with the enterprise architecture team in order to get things up, uh, add a few information which is needed, um, or even correct some if, if uh, we have not captured it yet. So this, this is fostering the collaborative approach that we have at any point of time um, uh, the possibility to get interacting uh, to get into interaction with the enterprise architecture team very important for us is also from a top-down perspective that uh, we um, have this business uh, business portfolio mapped to an it portfolio and then which is very nice at Scheffler, we have an overall um, demand and portfolio management uh, council where the top management from the functions and divisions are joining together to make one aligned prioritization across the companies on all the changes we wanna we wanna do the next quarter, the next half a year, the next year. This will be iterated every quarter. And we, since we're mapping all the changes um, with our functions and divisions toward the enterprise architecture, we we can give feedback about the dependencies, uh, about how much changes will be hitting to which kind of capability process system. Even, even up to the data objects as such. And this gives a lot of transparency about right shaping the dependency or right shaping the initiatives, projects, but also um, generate this value driven selection. So, what is the most priority for Scheffler, not per function or division and business area? It's about what's the most value for Scheffler, which topic should be tackled first before the others. This is really a collaborative approach where the mapping toward the enterprise architecture dependencies is bringing a lot of transparency and a lot of structure into the discussion. And with that, we, we, we right size and right positioned enterprise architecture exactly in that shaping the future um, space, having a, a value add with all the dependencies, everything we use or we know, uh, and um, as, a, as an input toward the shape, uh, shaping in the portfolio council. This is very um, interesting and it's really the, 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 the key enabler coming from more push models into a pull models. The first times uh, um, the stakeholders in that uh, council realized that the power of insights we are bringing to the table, the more you get pulled into pre-shaping the future aspects of future initiatives and get clarity. It is very important. Coming from, from the bottom up, what we do there, um, it's no rocket science, but since we are having a very consistent uh, vertical alignment of our architecture levels, this is a level three or three and a half level where we um, are able to sketch the, the, the architecture on, the, on a bigger initiative in a manner of who is using what with what kind of component and how it's dependent. Um, in order to shape the scope of an initiative, uh, we we are modeling that on level three, and since it's ev since everything is connected, we can see directly also in a portfolio management what kind of initiatives are hitting which kind of systems, components, data capabilities, whatever, and we have to consider then the dependencies. So we're working bottom up and top down to the toward the same model. That's why we can balance the right momentum of change, which is still handleable. And not over um, and over complexing uh, things as needed. Important is uh, one side on the one hand side it's a model where we have also different views and we're capturing with really the, the business object or the business motivation, the use cases, um, 
the processes involved, the, the actors and people involved, uh, what do they want to achieve, the objectives, and gives us a total view about the motivation and the impact of the change. And this is very, very important. If we are able as a quality criterion to sketch changes in this simple manner, we have thought it through. And then we can see in the, in the total enterprise architecture what kind of impact does this change have with what kind of value. Then also based on that, we can have different uh, views an architectural view, component model, operational model, or even others. Um, it will be then um, um, yeah, added uh, with some, some written um, explanation um, where we have all the changes captured in this similar manner that we have completely track about changes to our enterprise architecture and at the end of the day, our, our company as such. As one of um, our key transformation programs, we have, like, like the most of you, I guess, uh, big S4 transformation programs ahead of us. At Scheffler, we have a unique situation uh, compared to our uh, uh, friends from other companies. We have one single instance globally in 77 plants. So one system for basically totally different business models, uh, 77 plants in, I don't know, a lot of countries. Uh, with different uh, products uh, to be manufactured. And what we did there is to use enterprise architecture model in order to, to model the, the project scope. Um, you see on the, on the bottom or on the top left-hand side, uh, a bit of adjusted uh, S4 enterprise architecture meta model where we have all the requirements, processes, fit gaps, uh, divisional, functional extensions, coverage, system, components, systems, uh, interfaces required for it, everything in one model, which gives us the, the proper base to reshape the solution in the right manner. One, two systems, where is the differentiation? Do we build it in S4, outside? Um, how can we leverage new technologies to uh, bridge the gaps? All these kind of discussions will be then um, based on the facts which we covered over a, a period of nine months explore phase. We have captured it now into a model where we have the where we can guide the, the strategic discussion how we are really set up the program and the complete uh, solution and what kind of things we are sundowning, uh, re-implementing, adjusting, etc. So basically, with this kind of program, we touch nearly everything in the organization, but we have to do it wisely and in a step uh, approach. That's why we have also different plateaus. Like we're beginning with maybe the master data governance, then we have uh, maybe a central finance, and then we have the first simple uh, factory, and then we have a, a medium complex factory, and so on. So we have also these stages, how we are introducing which kind of capability in which stage, to which plants and site. We can really build up, monitor, and, communi uh, and, and communicate also to the people so that they understand the impact and value of enterprise architecture. So this is just an example of a very, very complex transformation program, but the value of, of combining this kind of different views and different informations into one model and play around with it, it's, it's uh, super massive, powerful, and highly recognized. And to uh, finish also my, my short presentation, uh, three things are, which is very, very important. Um, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Um, you can have the best enterprise architecture strategy and tools if you don't work on the culture, on the architectural thinking, um, the, the collaborative mode, um, you will not succeed. That's uh, one, one thing. Enterprise architecture is a team play. So it's like uh, the, the fish swarm. Everybody could and should consume enterprise architecture insights, but also they could, should, and they should contribute to it. So that we are really accessing the, the knowledge from the swarm, from our enterprise architecture talents uh, in a consume and contribute manner. That's very important. And last but not least, enterprise architecture, Scheffler. It's uh, for modern, innovative, flexible IT architecture, driving business innovation and agility. It's like this, this escalator uh, bringing, um, seeing the lights at the end of the tunnel, but also you can see it in the the very top, some, some navigations to turn right, left, and so on. And that, this is basically a nice picture I like. Um, enterprise architecture have to be done step by step, not just representing the escalator, 
uh, you have to bring light into the into the darkness, uh, get transparency, but also guide them um, the way to the future um, of the company, having this multiple dimensions and different levels. And um, for that, I will close and thank you for the uh, patience of my um, introduction and looking forward to the questions. Jochen, thank you so much for such a great presentation. We've got a lot of questions coming in. We don't have a lot of time, so I'll try and pick out a, a few of them. Um, and I loved your phrase at the very beginning, which I think uh, maybe people recall back at the beginning of the presentations, Jochen said, it's not necessarily the strongest company that will survive, it's the most adaptable. And I think that's a, a very true statement. Um, so uh, some of the questions, and I'll try and using your structure of level one, level two, level three, level four, we had a few questions at the beginning. Can you give us an example of a level one statement and, and how do you position the value of enterprise architecture to executives who perhaps don't understand enterprise architecture? Um, so level, level one is really to, to bridge from a strategic level um, what is really um, the dependency of data process and IT, and in, especially in IT, that the buzzwords like AI, cloud, um, IIoT, whatever, what does it mean in combination with data for the business? This is basically the, the basic, basic high level principles that they understand that digitization is, is uh, IT driven business innovation. And on that level, on a very high level, to to, to connect the dots in a, in a meaningful, understandable way, this is the, this is the very challenge. Um, to, to generalize the messages in, in that a simple, consumable way that also our top management is, is, is starting to understand, and then step by step, you can guide them to the level two, or uh, level three not, but level two, um, so that we have really crisp and, and clear messages also per domain if, if they want to ask um, more details. So it's really a, a bottom-up um, yeah, consolidation of the key messages, the key dependencies where they have to think on. And if they're ready to understand and consume that, you can guide them even more in a deep level. And just to give you an, an example, I'm just flipping to the, to the very beginning. This kind of enterprise architecture or IT architecture framework, it's known to our board. So this is the level of details we are we are addressing to the board, or oh, that, that was it. Um, this, is, this is the level of detail we are giving to them. Because when we really want to shape the future in a digitalization innovative way, we need to address it, or we need to ensure that people are really understanding the, the, the basic concepts and the, and the impact and the dependencies. Okay. Uh, thanks very much. So the next question, a little bit different one, is in your experience, how has the role of enterprise architecture changed with um, lots of cloud solutions becoming available and cloud platforms and also um, development methodologies such as agile, rapid iteration development methodology as opposed to waterfall? How has enterprise architecture changed to accommodate those Friends. It has been changed in that way that uh, even my enterprise architecture team is working agile. We're having three week sprints. We are delivering three weeks it, uh, um, concepts and, and uh, uh, iterations. And we have also clear guidance how to use um, technology in which, which kind of manner. So that's, that's a bit of a good thing. With the agile methodology, um, Agile methodology is fostering the, the modular and flexible architecture very much because um, with the modular flexible architecture, which we are um, proposing, um, you are faster in, in getting value done for the business. So um, overcoming this, this yearly projects with a long um, breath, you need to be able in, in nowadays uh, to, to um, deliver value on a short, short time notice. So um, iterative delivery of, of uh, value add is the, is the topic of the time. Uh, enterprise architecture have to be agile, have to, be, um, have to think in increments as a nature. Um, that's why 
it's really good to give people or give the, give the talents and our organization a guideline that they can adapt fast new te technologies and deliver fast, not overthinking a end-to-end -end solution too much, too long, because it will change in, in, in between. And so this is, for me, personal, uh, uh, perfectly fitting, but with a, with a fast um, uh, scale technology change, we have to set some boundaries that we are not reinventing the wheel 10 different times. And that's why this enterprise architecture guidelines are very, very important. Like, for example, a cloud first strategy, what does it mean? And you need to be very clear from top to bottom, what does it mean and what, what are the playing rules to play with? And also this architecture pattern definition so that, that the architecture pattern can be reused in order to scale up this kind of strategy. That's all things which I are ideal for agile and uh, that's why perfectly fitting into that kind of transformation got it um so next one's a little bit of an operational question I'll, I'll try and merge a couple of questions together which is how do you integrate with third-party systems like ppm systems you mentioned you're using service now uh, and then on top of that in some cases, you could see the same information in business design that you could see in service now. So when does a user go to one as opposed to the other where you might have duplicate information? So question one, how do you integrate the data? Is that integration bi-directional? And question two, who goes to what system for what reason? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> this is the key challenge, data integration, is that, once again. Um, I'm a highly fan of uh, unidirectional data integration. So we have to um, recognize what is the key source out of, uh, of, of, a, of a data element. And we're integrating from them. When you are starting to uh, adjust data on, on different uh, systems in parallel, you end up in a, in a simple chaos. Um, and so we, we want to capture data which is flying around and use them for enterprise architecture, which lead me to the second uh, answer. Um, if people are really interested in operational things, incident management reports, whatever, they should go to ServiceNow and remain there. Simple use case, highly efficient in their tools, they stay there. They go to the enterprise architecture when they want to have information connected to shape the future, uh, to make changes on a, on a broader scale. Um, and that's why we, we're consolidating um, this kind of data in a, in a very powerful tool like service now, I mean, different tools aim also or, uh, that they could, could do that kind of int integration, data integration, and probably they could. But we are using enterprise architecture really to, to shape portfolios, um, shape our future, shape our project demands, and that's what we're doing there. Operational stuff where, where, where we integrated the data from remains there as it is. So we want to not um, yeah, overlay too much from a use case perspective, we have a clear focus on enterprise architecture, use cases, not more. And we want to keep it that way. So that we have always a, a position like process management will be also, uh, we have a dedicated process management tool. And this is very powerful for that, super. But we're integrating them and, and connecting into the broader picture. That's what we're doing in enterprise architecture. Okay. Um, so I'll leave this at the, the last question. Um, when you, well, I, I guess a two part question. One was number of questions came in, say, how big is the enterprise architecture team at Schaffler? And then the second question is, how do you measure your own success or performance, the, the enterprise architecture team's uh, success or performance? What, what are the metrics you use to measure yourself? So how big is the team and how do you, how do you assess yourself? We have a team uh, about uh, 11, 11 per, uh, persons strong, um, divided into the domains. So we have domain architects uh, for the main key domains and cross domains, and um, also some per persons dedicated for the repository maintenance and, and management. So that's the team. Um, we are highly uh, collaborating with our domain business uh, stakeholders and, and uh, colleagues as also also with the process and data management colleagues. So that's more a collaboration um, approach. That's why a team size of about 10 to 12 is, should be enough for our um, company size. We have also uh, in the region some, some peers, enterprise architects we are collaborating with. So that's the team size. 
Um, and the second question again was? Uh, measuring, metrics and measurement of yourself. Interesting part, we are changing the measurements uh, from uh, the key deliverables of, level, of the various levels into more um, value-driven KPIs, um, like on how much uh, change initiatives has enterprise architect uh, contributor to um, so that we are establishing this pre-definition of changes within the enterprise architecture before it gets ex executed so that's more really business value driven kpis where we are changing our our uh, setup at the moment from a more classical approach uh, more to a change impact um, kpis perspective um, which is suitable for us because we want to position it in this way what we want to avoid is, is uh, this, this more legacy traditional KPIs like um, how much costs have you um, reduced, etc. This is also very important, but not the key drivers. We should, be, we should have a balanced um, KPI set uh, to set the expectations, but also the, the objectives for the, for the team members, where to work with which focus. And uh, we are more focused on shaping the future rather than uh, managing the uh, as is, because the managing of as is with the established repository, you want to hand over to the product owners, which are anyhow dealing with their current products. And so we're enabling them to do their job better and to, be, to, to get the most out of the IT products in a, in a most efficient way. And so this is more, more an enabling task for us to enable then these product owners to do their job better. That's then an indirect KPI for us, but not a direct. Makes sense. Well, um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for questions. I will say there was a number of questions, uh, I think, from business design customers asking for some technical details of how we connect to service now. For those people, we're sorry we didn't get to those questions. I'm sure if you get in touch with your business design account teams, we'll get you the right answer. But for now, Johan, thank you so much uh, for your time today. A great presentation. Loads of really nice messages of thank of thanks have come through on the questions panel. I really appreciate your time, and uh, I hope you stay very safe during these difficult times that we're in right now. And um, once again, thank you for your time, and thank you to everyone who attended this meeting for your time, and we'll be sending out a recording of this in the next 24 hours. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, and stay safe. Thanks.